Well, episode three, we haven't been kicked off the air of graphic content. I'm as amazed as you because I thought for sure the internet moral police would have had us for breakfast. <laughs> Fucking cunty oath. <laughs> that should be a cereal. No. Um, thank you very cunty much for joining me, Ben. Michael Byrne of Cranburn. Jason fame. O. Callahan of that other place. Yeah, That's thanks. probably well Doveton. It is. It's yeah. Dubton-y. Yeah. Well done. Um, we are back, and we are, we have another great range of content for people to watch. I think it's another great episode. But I have to say that because we're the ones making it. I'm willing to say that this will be the best fucking episode of 2014 so far. So, yeah. So you have to kind of say it's, okay. Uh, so we have interviews with Dan Slot, who's famous for his amazing slot machine. <laughs> Uh, Dan Slot. We've also got a game review of Rogue Trooper, which Trooper Machine, not as good. Not as good. Just let it go. Um, which is an old favourite of ours from uh, the you know 2000 AD days. Rebellion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Studios. Yeah. 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 Uh, we look at Old Man Logan and the Quitter. Let's let, don't don't give it away because uh, yeah we love talking about comic books. We do. Uh, Darren's back. It's another fantastic episode. I think. Let's just get into it because it is. Fucking hot in Melbourne. Jesus Christ, it is so hot here. 42, that's like 110 for you Fahrenheit bitches. No one cares about Fahrenheit. I know, and I don't give a fuck about you Fahrenheit either, except for it's got an F in it, which is kind of like foibles. Um, thanks. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Cut, please. Hi, my name's Steve Spark. I'm the managing editor of FEC Comics. Uh, we are publishers of... Uh, Cranburn, Seven, Fireside Tales, Great Works, Lonely Monsters, and uh, more to come. All right, so we got to cover some more comic books. Now, we've been very lucky in the last few months. We have. In that, even if we haven't necessarily liked it, we haven't hated the books. (laughs) Okay. Um, This time, though, we got an absolute stinker. I am willing to say that I wasn't able to finish it. I'm sorry, but Mr. Harvey Becker of <laughs> Dean Haspel Art, Haspiel. <laughs> uh, yes, so he, they are actually holding behind him, but that's why it the, was really good. Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. The book was called The Quitter, mm. and uh, I quit it. I like also halfway, quit it halfway through. Like it's, cigarettes, I. It's uh, what is he, like, he? I can't remember if he like immigrated with like Jewish parents, and it was about them working in the store, and then him growing up and being good at football, but then not finding his motivation, and then he was going to like Jewish university, and he liked to draw comics. He was a good fighter, but he had a lot of self doubt. Yeah, I, just, I, I yeah. it was the most self indulgent piece of crap I think I've read in years. Uh, it was, I couldn't finish it. I couldn't even bring myself to get three quarters. Like I, everything, everything that was said in it, it just came across with. Like, you know, you know that horrible stereotypical, like, Jewish voice? You're like Jerry Lewis or uh, Professor Frink from The Simpsons. Kyle's Every, cousin from South Park. Everything came people. across in those voices because that is just how it read. And I, I try not to be, uh, you know, that, that way inclined, but I just could not picture it outside of that box. He reminds you of Woody Allen and neither you like Woody Allen or you don't. So yeah. if he does remind you of Woody Allen and you don't like Woody Allen, it kind of, from the very get-go, he's like... Swimming against the tide. Yeah, it one is. autobiographies though, just not my thing anyway. Yeah. So you know, he was always from the very start. It was going to be a hard sell. I'm sorry, Mr. Harvey, but the other know. one is a very easy sell though. Oh fuck me up the bum with a giant yeah. cock of love. Yeah, uh, old man Logan, uh, Mark Miller, and mm. uh, your boy, Mr. McNiven. Niven. Is that the one? I yeah, was yeah. going to say Divine then. No, 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 that's <laughs> sorry. a different thing. Ah, um, oh, fantastic book. It's it's oh. set like fifty years after the bad guys win. Mm, it's probably the best way to describe it's it. It's fucking awesome. Buy yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, just say that for another thirty seconds. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Buy okay. It. Okay. Okay. But uh, we're gonna give some explanation. <laughs> the art's really good. Uh, right, yeah. um, no, yep. Watching how like the genealogies played out amongst these different uh, you know heroes that you know and things like you that. You ain't seen grandsons till you've seen the Hulk's grandsons. Pretty Fuck much. My bum. Yep. It was. Uh, With a big green dick. That, okay. Keeping it um, in theme. Having the having the uh, Hawkeye and Wolverine was a good match up because totally. it worked. It won- I don't know. There's there needs to be more comics with blind people driving Spider-Man Humvees. <laughs> yes, and that is, that's probably most of the book, to be honest. Anyway, the, the, the thing is... The it's, ending! It's as much a love letter to Marvel as it is to Westerns. Mm. And the ending, you could either leave it as it is, or you could make a second one. I've never come so hard over a two-page sized sound I, effect. I think you have. All right, maybe I have. That's, yeah, okay. But... Either way, it is genuinely probably one of the better reads I've... Uh, the single issue that I've ever read in, in a long, long time. I agree, yes. Mm. 
Now going back a little bit more to a classic comic book, let's talk about Rogue Trooper. It's a great 2000 AD series in a world set in the future where clone troopers are fighting. Anyway, the, the main point is they send these blue soldiers down to fight and they all have chips in the back of their heads. And when they die, you can take those chips and put them into weapons, new clones, whatever the case may be. Rogue Trooper takes us along the story of following one of these Rogue Troopers as he follows his friends, and when I say friends, it's a very loose term, and picks up the chips from their, their skulls and puts them into his helmet, into his weapons, and it really, really works because they all, all of a sudden they get these new powers and that's how you unlock the progression chain of things to go. So it ties into the universe really, really well. You fight the, the Nazi looking dudes, but it also works from uh, the, like the, the actual gameplay point of view. The, the more you upgrade those chips, the more powers they have. You can set up a turret, you can use like extra like vision on your, on your scopes and things like that when you've got the one in your helmet. So from a game standpoint, it really, really works. And for fans of 2000 AD's like Rogue Trooper comic book series, it's great as well because it actually ties into that universe quite well. And, and realistically, it tells a story that you probably already know, much like say the Spider-Man movies told the story of Green Goblin, which you already knew anyway. But it's good to see it in a new format that treats it with the reverence it deserves. And that's something that's really lacking from a lot of bad comic book adaptations. So, Darren, it may be post-Christmas, but it doesn't stop for you guys. You guys have some crazy things coming up very, very soon. Yeah, we go straight out of Christmas. We get one day off and then convention season starts for us. And, and this week, everybody is gone. Doctor Who crate. Now, as we film this, they've just announced the ticket prices and things for, what are they calling it? Hooniverse. Hooniverse. Any Who convention always has to have some yeah, sort of some Who kind fun of in pun, there. Yeah, right. But yeah, Matt Smith, Karen Gillian, and uh, Rory Ponder are all coming down to Australia doing a four city tour, which we get to be dealers at all of them with t shirts. Well, I, and I guess that's the hard part. Like, normally it's like Colin Bates, oh, that's cool. Paul McGann's coming down. Yeah, sweet. You know, he was all right. This is Matt Smith. Like he just handed in his handed over the reins. Handed over right. what it's three months ago. Yeah, like, yeah. So transformed into an old guy, and off he goes yeah, to tour the world. Apparently, so uh, so this is going to be huge. It's going to be one of the biggest conventions. Well, conventions the wrong word. It's going to be an afternoon with the ponds to hit Australia, and it's travelling around four cities. Uh, as with any major event, like the Stones, I just missed out on because <laughs> it's a. Uh, they're a privilege, not a right. And yes. unfortunately, these things are expensive, but we'll be there selling t-shirts. Yeah, of course you will. Of course, I, I forgot who I was dealing with. But I, I guess that's not it as far as apparel goes, is it? Well, no, we're excited here for socks. So, uh, he says that barefooted, but the camera can't pan down that way. That's fine. Um, socks. Is, is there much of a market for well, superhero socks? The thing is this. The DC copped a lot of flag just recently for a big article saying that they didn't do a lot of their cartoons because teenage boys and young boys weren't buying the toys. Yeah, right. right? And if the boys aren't buying them, they cancel the show. Yeah, yeah. Because apparently girls don't buy... No, it's all since old. Buy <laughs> established stuff. gender roles. Yeah. That's right. Um, what we've discovered over the last 10 years as girls have become a major part of fandom is girls do buy. Oh, yeah. They just buy cooler stuff. Yep. And socks and sweaters and hoodies and wearable collectibles and showing your colours is, is become this new thing. And high quality socks that are only 10 bucks a pair uh. <laughs> have become this great item. Uh, it's good. Guys, wear the two guys that wear ankle socks are you know, questionable. But That's girls fine. that wear ankle socks, fantastic. It's fine. Whatever, man. Like, it doesn't matter that much. But I guess it's one of those things that we're so used to all of the new fandoms. Yep. Yeah, and Star Wars has become a whole new thing with, you know, with the Disney buyout and stuff like that. But man, old Star Wars stuff is mental. Like yeah. the, 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 the amount of crap. Oh, I've got this random toy they released of some dude who was in the background of one scene. Yeah, and it's $17,000. It's the like, what face. the hell? Yeah, the yeah. Face. So yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with, what happens in the collective market is every 10 years or so, everybody goes vintage crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a show called The Toy Hunter at the moment that's been going with people nuts and everybody's gone Star Wars crazy because the new Star Wars is coming out. And just in time, they've released these gorgeous collectible guides. So it's kind of like Grey's Guide, but for Star Wars yep. collectibles. One book's purely for action figures, one book's for all the random assortment, bizarre stuff you can buy, like electronic toothbrushes and stuff like that. Jeez. So you can hit up your garage sales, check them out, save them or sell them. There you go. Well, Darren, thank you. You've always got something interesting to show me. It wasn't bronies this time, which is, I'm grateful for. The bronies are coming. <sighs> Okay, um, I was working on um, a book starring The Thing from the Fantastic Four. And uh, at the time I was writing it, there had been Fantastic Four movies coming out and Marvel wanted to capitalize on it and they started doing more and more Fantastic Four projects. So by the time I started doing my Thing book, there was Fantastic Four, Marvel Knights Four, uh, there was Ultimate Fantastic Four, Marvel Adventures Fantastic Four, there are all these tons of 
and I think we kind of overloaded the market by putting out one book too many, and then that was mine. <laughs> so we had the monthly adventures of just the thing. Um, and the initial orders before retailers even knew what it was, or fans had a chance to react to it, the initial orders were very low. So we knew right out of the gate that we were a book that was in trouble. Um, so we kept trying to do things to get more people to notice the book and try it out and to get retailers to up their order. And I did a silly thing where I tried to mobilize fans online by doing a thing called the Pull My Thing campaign. And what that means is you can have a thing in a comic book shop called a pull list where you can tell uh, retailers ahead of time, I want this comic, can you put it aside for me? And if enough people do that, then the retailer orders more copies. So our, our whole idea for the campaign was let's get the fans to pull the book ahead of time. So the forced retailers up their order. And it was, um, it, it was very much a grassroots thing. It wasn't something Marvel said, let's do this. It was something me and the artists and other people went, let's try to get more people doing this. And we had the very silly name of Pull My Thing. So that's how that happened. It's hard to reach out to fans. It is very easy to reach out to online fans, which are different things. That I think online, you get a very hardcore distilled you know, uh, it's not reflective of reality at all. It's reflective of the most fanatic. And that can be a good thing. You know, I think everybody who's a fan online is spending tons of their, their income to buy these books, and we're all very grateful, and that's my rent, you know. Um, so it was, it was more an idea to get, to go after the hardcore fan base. Like, if I can just get, like, 1,000 of you, because you're guys I can reach. I can go online, I can just type something on a message board. If I can get like 1,000 of you to help out, that could be the difference between our book being canceled and not, for a book like The Thing. With a book like Spider-Man, like we just had sales come out this week, we're a top 10 book. I'm not that worried, we're, we're fine. With Thing, we were, we were skating cancellation from day one. Um, and it was nothing we could have helped. Um, so our only hope was to get people to read the book like the book, and to build it from there. And it was, it was one of the saddest things about the Pull My Thing campaign is by the time our last two issues were out, which were, by that time the book was canceled, our sales were going up. So issue seven and issue eight went up. We could have pulled it off. It's not a dense lot talking about, I guess, dealing with fandoms and things like that. I mean, we deal with it a bit on you know, New Game Plus. We get people talking about games, the streaming community, stuff like that. You've got to have some kind of weird fan stories, surely. Actually, I do to uh, really connect with my fans. I offer them to quite happily and freely, as long as they're over 18. Any sex doesn't matter, to cut my balls for the photos. Okay. Uh, any, you, just, you thought that was your thing? Yeah, just, you were yeah. sick of, yeah? Yeah, like, instead of tongue in ear, bunny ears, just cut them. It's, you know, it's good, it's close. You know, you'll feel a lot closer to someone when you felt the heat of their nuts. I think that's a, I think that's a, a lesson to live by. And yeah. don't come to me if you get a rash on your hand. Uh, you probably shouldn't have said that part because now you can't pretend you didn't know about it. Look, it's herpes, but it'll go away with some dead off. <laughs> it won't go away with dead off. It stays with you forever. It's like death and taxes. Anyway, uh, so next week we have an expert episode. Uh, I caught you before you had to go at me. I wouldn't have said anything you about you saying next week. Anyway, uh, we've got Crossed, which is going to be fucking good, awesome. Fun, I guess. Is fun the word? Like. Well, you know, I mean, if you like fucking dead people with the maggoty penis, then yes, yeah, life is fun. Cool. That's uh, definitely sounds like my jam. But we should definitely talk about the, uh, the what we what we do here. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash NG Plus presents uh, graphic content. Uh, your Cranburn, of course. Phonetic. Although actually, I said phonetic the other day. Somebody says, "Oh, B E R N." I'm like, "Oh, fuck! It isn't." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sort of phonetic. Kind of phonetic. Phonetic yeah. until the last part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I guess as well, NewGamePlus.tv. Don't forget Geeks for the Geek as well. They're good enough to have us. Oh. Do <laughs> Doing it. The Wiggles do thing it. Again. Yeah. And then you left me in the lurch. No, I'm oh, sorry.